Good afternoon, year six. Hope you're sat down in a very comfortable seat. For today's lesson, um, you might want to have a, a sick bucket somewhere, a sick bag, for those of you that are very, very, very easily frightened or scared by a little bit of raw human body part. Dare I say, don't worry, it's not a human, but it's going to be a sheep. Today's science session is going to be about dissection. I'm not going to say what organ, I'll leave that to the scientists to tell you. So welcome to your session today. Right, as always, all you need to do is scan the QR code, or you can simply go on slido.com and enter the code, which, which is hash 9747167. This is like the longest one we've had ever. So join me in today's session. I have got Mr. Oroidin, one of our science teachers here at BA, and Miss Adajumo, another science teacher here at BA. Hi, guys, and welcome to your session today. Next slide, please. So I've got my, um, as you can see, I've got my Slido. I'm all nice and ready. And I'll now pass you over to Miss Adajumo. <laughs> Oh, okay. Hello, guys. Welcome, Year Sixes, who will soon be our Year Sevens. So, so today we are going to be looking at the amazing organ, which is our heart. So our heart is very important. But before we actually get into the heart, we have some obviously few starter questions, which is our do now. Miss, could you just get to the do now for the um, students? please. Right, so basically, before we get to the do now, um, we have our hearts. So our hearts is the powerhouse or the drum beat of our lives. It's an amazing structure. We've seen it on different cards, but we actually have that beating with, within us. Why is it amazing? Because it pumps blood. In that blood, we have oxygen within that blood. And we are going to actually see if a, um, a full-size heart. We are also going to see a dissection of how the heart looks like inside the structures. But before we actually get onto that part, we have a few starter um, questions which I would like you to attempt. So next slide, please. Thank you. So there are some key words at the bottom feel free to use those keywords to actually fill the gaps, read through the sentence, use the keywords to fill in the gaps, and we will go through the answers shortly. So I will give you a few minutes, and then we will. Um, I'll get me to actually read out what some of you have written down, and then we will correct any misconceptions that may have arisen. So, Miss, when if we say two, two, three minutes max, then we can go through the answers. Okay, we've got a few people saying hi. We've got uh, Joseph from Upland. Uh, anonymous, remember, uh, you might want to write down your name and your primary school as well, so we know your name and what primary school you're coming from. We've got Cameron as well. Cameron says hi, and Cameron's from Upland as well. So, Miss, do you want them to, to number um, one, two, three, one, four, five, six, seven? Right. What I would like them to what I would like them to do is um, actually, yes. Yeah, so maybe number one could be I don't know waste. So put one as waste. So for each one, so the first one will be one. The second space is two. The third one is three. So for each one, so write number one. Don't write the whole sentence. Number one could be muscle. Number two could be, I don't know, fist. Okay, so step by step. So I'll give you two, three minutes and we will review what you've done. Oh, Joseph has got his answers already, miss.
Right, so how many uh, how many answers have you got so far? We've got Joseph has submitted his answer. Okay, Joseph is one that is, is always is always there. That's good. And we know how passionate he is about science as well. So guys, I will say another two minutes. So make sure your answers are clear. <clears throat> You've labeled or numbered them correctly. Um. Miss, I was wondering, because I do like um talking about the heart actually after the do now can i do a, a two minutes section yeah yeah go on yes Right, guys, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Right, Miss, would you be able to um, let, let me have some answers from the students who have um, taken part? Okay, Miss. So uh, Joseph has gone for muscle, left, feast, no, fist, blood, oxygen, nutrients, and waste. Amanda has gone for muscle, left, um, fist, blood, oxygen, nutrients, and waste. Sarah has gone for muscle, left, fist, blood, nutrients, oxygen, and waste. And Cameron has gone for muscle, left, fist, blood, nutrients, oxygen, and waste. And the last one I'll read out is Anuprit, who has gone for muscle, left, fist, blood, oxygen, nutrients, and waste. Well done, guys. Actually, most of the answers were correct. So you are on point so far with how the heart works and what the heart is. Right. For those who didn't quite get it, let's go to the next slide where we shall where the answers can be revealed. So next slide, please. Right. So basically, <clears throat> um, most of you were able to gather that the heart is a muscle it is because of what it does it pumps blood where is it located in the left side so sometimes you hear of um, when you carry maybe a baby or you carry maybe for example dad carries you your dad is carrying your mom you can feel the heart beating it's normally on the left hand side the size is not really big but it's the size of a fist so your fist is pretty is large but it's quite small again it um the heart sends blood obviously it's not water it sends blood so our bodies are our veins arteries blood vessels are filled with blood what do they provide the body with oxygen because at the end of the day oxygen is a vital let's say um let me say ingredient for us to survive nutrients within the blood but we eat, we all eat food. So at some point, these, these nutrients needs to go around the body for us to grow. So from a baby, we take milk, which has protein in it, which makes us grow. And at the end of the day, when we eat, we must, we must dispose of the waste. And that's where the blood too comes in. So well done, guys, for all your correct answers. 
if we now move actually miss you want to do a quick bit yes, so please. yes so i'll give miss sure. a few minutes to do her part and i'll carry on yes thanks. i'm so excited about this part actually um once upon a time i was i remember being in year 10 and year 11 about to do my gcse and this comes up all the time in science so very very long time ago many many years ago now i did teach myself this and i do it in my classes up to today so find your left side of your chest and just place your left hand on that part of your chest right there fist it and then stick out your thumb and your first finger so you end up with that and then do the same thing with your right hand place your right hand next to it put a fist and then you've got those perfect but this is what your heart would look like isn't it yeah so there's that fist miss was talking about obviously it's been exaggerated so i've got two fists put together now the heart has four main blood vessels yeah so left thumb left first finger i'll put those back down right thumb and then my right first finger. Those are the four blood vessels. Now, Miss is going to be talking to you more about this, but the left side of the heart has blood that's coming from your lungs into the top chamber of the heart. Miss is going to talk to you more about that, into the top chamber. So if I cut my fist, uh, maybe one quarter of the top half of my fist, okay, that blood goes into that, um, canal, we call that the atrium. So that's the left atrium. And then the blood is then squeezed down to the lower part, which we call the ventricle. You've got the left atrium and then the left ventricle. Now that blood is then squeezed again. And this time around, it's going to come out of this blood vessel that we call the aorta. Okay. So that's the one heart. So that's two blood vessels. We've got blood coming in from the lungs. Now, because the blood has to go from here to the rest of your body. So you can imagine where your toe is. That blood has to be pumped all the way to that big toe, that very last cell at the tip of that toe has to receive that blood as quickly as possible. So the left side of the heart has to pump that blood under high pressure. So during the dissection today, I want you to look out for that section of the heart because that part of it is going to have a thicker muscle, okay? Now let's come to the right side of the heart. So that blood is going to come into this blood vessel. We call that the vena cava, okay? It goes through that top layer, that one quarter, we call the right atrium. And it goes from the right atrium and it's squeezed to the right ventricle. And guess what? Pumps and that blood is pushed out. Where do you reckon that blood's going to? Let's see. So if this was coming from the lung, that's going to the rest of the body. This has come from the rest of the body. Where's this blood going to? Let's see in the chat window. Fastest to send your response will be read out. Don't forget to put your primary school as well. And that's it for me, Miss. Sorry, Miss, what did they say? That's it for me. So I'm going to wait oh, okay. for that reply to come back and then you can carry right. on. Right. Thank, um, you, thank you, Miss, for your um, lovely demonstration. So hopefully some of you might be able to use that, remember it to help you when it comes to things like the heart as you get into um, secondary school. Um, so if we move to the next slide, please, and I will briefly explain to you the heart itself. So, for example, we all have a heart. We all have a heart because we pump blood. We need to make sure our heart is taken care of. And there's so many ways in which we can do that. For starters, exercise. Exercise is, an, is a good way to not just get our bodies fit, but also we are making sure our heart is in good condition. In terms of diet, there are good diets and there are, well, good foods and bad foods that harm or make good to our hearts. So, for example, alcohol, cigarettes, all those sort of things are things that will damage the good heart that we have. 
good exercise, it builds it up. It makes us actually more healthy. And, our, and sometimes exercising helps us reduce the amount of, let's say, fat or bad things around the heart. So as Miss said, there are the heart is like our fist. It has four chambers. In those chambers, blood, um, we have the left and the right atrium and the left and right ventricles. Okay, so those four chambers have their different, how do I put it, um, different functions in terms of pumping blood away from the heart and to the heart or to the lungs to pick up oxygen, where that goes to the body, and they will take out waste, which is then removed from the body via the blood. So the arteries takes blood away. You see, hence the word artery starts with A, away, while the veins takes brings blood to. Okay, so that's a good way of remembering. Artery starts with an A, so away, veins is to. Okay, so the heart again is situated behind the rib cage. What's the function of the rib cage? Obviously, is to protect the delicate heart itself. So if, for example, you're playing football, you won't immediately damage the heart because of that rib cage. okay? And also, the heart, sometimes, if in a quiet place, you can actually hear it beat. okay? So sometimes, if, for example, there's an accident, where do the paramedics actually feel for a pulse? Does anyone know straight away without looking at my screen? Where does... Oh, good. Can you send your messages quickly to me? So where do they quickly take a pulse to know if you are alive or dead? So, Miss, any questions, any, any answers, sorry, or any feedback for me? So from previous um, feedback in regards to where's that blood that was coming from this blood vessel, where it was going, um, we've got Joseph our scientists of them all. I think if we're going to have any more science sessions, Joseph, you might have to come on site and, and actually be part of this. I can, I can feel your energy. I can feel the eagerness. I, like, you just want to be here presenting. So Joseph has said it's the oxygenated blood going back to the lungs. I like that the fact that he's actually used the word deoxygenated. I never mentioned oxygenated or de. I kept it so basic and so simple. Um, and if you notice, it's not even one of our keywords. That's how we know. So I can already predict you're going to be a surgeon, aren't you, Joseph? So Joseph actually sent that answer. Um, right. So in regards to your question to where would you take a pulse, we have got Nick. I'm not sure what school you've come from, Nick. Always make sure your name has your name and your primary school so we can not just say your name, but we can then attach your primary school as well. So Nick has gone for your wrist and your neck. Cameron says your wrist. Um, Sarah from Crooklog says on your neck or your wrist. And Amanda from Castilian says either your wrist or your neck. Right. Thank you, Miss, for those answers. So, guys, you are correct. So straight away, they will feel that because there is a major artery blood vessel right there where you can actually feel how many beats per minute the heart the um the heart is pumping so basically it's in a nutshell that is the heart it doesn't weigh that much but it has a weight of its own hence why diet exercise taking care of ourselves maintains the weight of it obviously females males we have a different um, mass in terms of the um the how, how big it is so for males it's slightly bigger than females but it's they do the same thing right so we so based on that brief introduction we will go into the actual demonstration of the heart we will show you first a real heart talk about the little bits and pieces that we can see why they are there and then show you the inside of um, a dissected heart so, Miss, can we go on to the next slide so we just show the different um, equipments that we might need? Right. So, that is just a pictorial view. If we pop to the actual, um, um, actual heart itself, 
Oh, yes, please, yeah. Oh, let me mute. Oh, okay. Right, so, so this is the actual heart itself, okay? We, what do you guys notice? Straight miss, can you just um, have a look at your phone to find out what they're saying about what they notice straight away from looking at this lovely organ? So what do we notice about it? Let me hold it slightly up. Okay, as soon as I get um, a response, I will let you know. Uh, miss, what animal does this heart okay. come from? Sheep, sheep. It's a sheep's heart. Oh, yeah. Okay, we have got um, layers of fat around it. Okay, okay that's good. Right, any more comments? That's it, there. Okay, right, so good point. All these white bits are fat, which you correctly um, label or mention. The reason it is, is to actually protect the heart. The heart within the body has like a sac or a membrane around it, which gives it an additional protection from being hit or um, from the other organs. Also, if we notice we have some parts to it, that is the muscle. That is the muscle of the heart because like you rightly said, the heart is a muscle because it does an incredible job of pumping blood around the body. It's also an involuntary action. What do we mean by involuntary? Miss, let me give them a few seconds. What does it mean by involuntary motion? So the heart is an involuntary organ, yeah? As soon as I get something, Miss, I'll let you know. Okay, cool. Okay, so Joseph from Upland um, has said, your brain does not motion. So your brain does the motion without thinking about it. Hmm. That's correct, Joseph. Star student, that's correct. So it does it. We don't, don't just tell, oh, it's not time to beat now. It does it on its own. Hence why we need to take proper care of it because if anything goes wrong, we can't tell it to carry on pumping or take a break. Okay? Right. So that is just in a nutshell. I will pass it over to my colleague, Mr. Oriden, who will go into more detail um, about the hearts. Great. Thank you, Miss. Okay, um, could we quickly go back to the PowerPoint and have a look at the next slide before we go deeper into this? Thank you very much. Perfect. Okay, so from that GIF on the side of the screen that you can see at the moment, you can see really clearly the different chambers of the heart and how it works. So on that on the left side of the diagram, though it's not actually the left side of the heart, um, because imagine you're looking at yourself in a mirror, on the left side of that diagram, you can see the two first chambers of the heart. You've got the right atrium, where deoxygenated blood is coming into your heart through a special vein called the vena cava. The blood from that first chamber gets squeezed into the next chamber called the right ventricle which then pumps the blood 
through another special tube called the pulmonary artery towards the lungs, where the blood picks up the oxygen and then gets pumped back towards the heart through another set of special tubes called the pulmonary veins, which are the only veins in your entire body that pump oxygenated blood. From the uh, left atrium, which you can see on the right side of the diagram, remember you're looking in a mirror here, the blood from the left atrium gets pumped into the left ventricle, which is this much thicker, more muscular part of the heart, because from the left ventricle, blood gets pumped to the rest of your body, which is a much bigger task than just to your lungs. That gets pumped from the left, vent left ventricle through the biggest artery in your body, the aorta, which is this really thick tube at the top of your heart that uh, travels down the middle of your insides, almost to behind your belly button, from which it branches off and provides oxygenated blood for the rest of your body. So as we perform this dissection, keep an eye out, and I will draw attention to those four chambers, the two atria and the two ventricles, and keep an eye out for the aorta and the vena cava. So, Miss, if you could go back to my camera now, and um, we will dissect this heart. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, once again, if you are a bit squeamish, you've probably turned off already, but this is a sheep's heart, and I am about to cut it up. Um, so if you don't want to see that now, is a good time to not look. Um, so here, as Miss has already described, we've got our heart, and I'm just going to move it off screen where I've got all of my uh, surgical equipment, my scalpels. I'm going to start by identifying the thicker side of my heart, which is this side here. As you can see from that angle, it's not quite symmetrical, is it? You've got a much more muscular side. I'm going to turn it to the base, and I'm going to start my incision here, my cutting. And I'm just going to work all the way around like it's a bread bun, just to get a nice cross section cut straight through the middle. So bear with me for two seconds while I quickly do that. I can imagine the surgeon would do it I'll completely different. <laughs> right. Perfect. Okay, and now I'm going to bring my heart back on the screen. And I've now successfully cut my way all the way around it. And as you can see, it's kind of deflated a bit now that I've cut into it. And the first thing that I'm going to do is simply place it on my cardboard background. And I'm going to reveal now the inside of this heart. Ooh, there we go. Oh. Perfect. Right, okay. There we go. Nice clean cut here. Got a clean slice right through the center of that heart where we can see all of the main parts. So let me grab my different tool. Here was my scalpel that I used to cut it. I'm just going to safely cork that back up so it's nice and out of the way. And I'm going to use my pointer. I'm not sure what the scientific name is for this, but I'm just going to use this to point at different parts. So what we can see, first of all, really prominently, really clearly, is on this part of the heart over here, this thicker side, um, which is the left side of the heart, even though it's on the right, but I have cut it and flipped it. First of all, we can see this area here. That is the left atrium so that's that first chamber oh, we saw right. where blood is being pumped into Perfect. yes let me just show that coming in let me find the tube the hole where is it no yes no not quite no, I may no, have cut into it. Cut Never mind. Into it, yeah. um, so I've cut through uh, a bit I wanted to show off. But anyway, here we can see that left atrium, this first room where the blood is pumping into. Sorry, the right yes. side. I'm flipping, I've uh, mixed myself up. It's the right atrium, my bad. And then just below that, beneath this wall, you can see the vent right ventricle here. Again, really clearly. There we go. We can see this ventricle here. From this ventricle, the right ventricle, it will be pumped up into the lungs, which now we can see all of this much more clearly on this part of the heart. So remember, because of the way I flipped it, 
like that. This side is the right side of the heart, and this side is the left side of the heart. So on the right side of the heart over here coming in, remember we had deoxygenated blood, which makes this tube here coming in just there, this tube, the vena cava, the right atrium and the right ventricle. From here, we pump up the tube on this side there, up towards the lungs. That's where the deoxygenated blood's going up the lungs. Then the blood gets pumped back towards the heart from this side, this side of the heart, through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium, which is not extremely clear here, but you can see the outline of this chamber here. And then from there into the left ventricle, which is this area here. Again, I've cut it um, not quite perfectly, but you can see that there. And you can see that there. Notice this side of the heart, this wall here and this wall here, are much thicker. That's because this side of your heart that pumps blood to the rest of your body has to work a lot harder to get that blood all the way around. All the way from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, all of that pressure, that pushing force, comes from this side of the heart. From the left ventricle, which is that part there and that part there, the blood is pushed through the aorta, which we can see here. I've kind of cut it in half a bit. This big, thick tube right at the top of the heart. You can see just about the remains of the aorta there. Through the aorta, you've got all of that oxygenated blood pumping to the rest of the body. So, quick recap. We've got the right atrium there. We've got the right ventricle here. And we can see that mirrored on this side as well. And then over here, we've got the left atrium and the left ventricle. We've got the aorta and we have the vena cava just there, that tube that, that deoxygenated blood comes through. Brilliant. Anything else you'd like to add to that, Miss? Uh, no, that is perfect. That's fine. That's fine. Um, also, one thing I wanted to point out, if we go to the slide, I'm not sure if the valves are that visible, but... Uh, oh, that's a valve, okay. So what the function, so we can clearly see it on our screen, the function of the valve is to allow so that the blood doesn't um, go back. It prevents backflow of blood. So you can see from the screen, imagine blood is coming from the left atrium into the left ventricle. It, so the blood in the left ventricle does, cannot go back into the left atrium. Hence, the, the valves are there. It's like a little door. It stops the backflow of blood. So that's just one thing. Oh, yeah, the arrows. The arrows present. So if you look at the arrows, it shows you where the blood is actually going to. Okay, so that is just one thing I wanted to add to what Sir said. But apart from that, that is a, a nutshell snapshot of um, a dissection of a heart. Thank you. Um, Thank right, you. Could, oh, I'm just going to change my camera back. I think we're all done looking at the uh, squeamish part. Yeah. <laughs> and if anyone turned away from their screen, you can look back now. Excellent. Okay. okay. Um, so, so if we could move on to the next slide, please. Brilliant. Here is just a slightly neater diagram. Um, it's not quite a GIF. It does show um, exactly what we were just looking at. Each of those areas of the heart labeled nicely. Uh, a scientifically correct diagram doesn't quite look like a love heart. You see on a Valentine's tea <gasps> card, they look a lot more intricate. There's a lot more going on in a real heart, a lot more tubes and a lot more rooms, chambers. Excellent. Next slide, please. Brilliant. OK, so um, let's to summarize and to recap what we've learned so far. I'm going to ask a few questions. And if you could put your answers in the chat box, or sorry, the Slido, so that Miss can read them out. Um, so first of all, what is the job of the heart? Let's start right at the beginning of this lesson. What does the heart do? What is the job of the heart?
Why is that answering that, sir? Mm -hmm. Just to let you know, why is the dissection was going on? We had a few comments. Um, Joseph had asked if um, we get to, if they do dissection in secondary school. And Nick was um, just disgusted by it. So I think he probably looked away. Um, and we had one more comment. Uh, I believe it was Nick. Nick said, actually in primary school at the moment, they're learning about the circulatory system. So what a handy time to learn about the heart. Definitely, what a good link into what we're learning mm. today. Um, and uh, to, to answer the first question from Joseph, um, you absolutely do. I know it's definitely an A-level biology practical um, that everyone has to dissect a heart um, for A-level biology. Um, and uh, if you're wondering, no, you don't get to keep the heart. Um, and um, the, what was the next question? Sorry, I'm so focused on uh, the actual dissection. Do they do it in school? That's okay. Yeah, yeah just A level. A -level. That's A -level. Brilliant. Thank you, Miss. Are there, are there any answers for this question yet? What does the heart do? Okay, I have a few. Brilliant. So could you just mute for a second so we don't get that feedback? Do you yes, of course. Okay, so the very first person is anonymous because it isn't a name. It pumps oxygenated blood around the body. Oh, it's, that's Nick, sorry. The name was at the end of the sentence. And then we've got Joseph from Upland that says the heart, um, the heart's job is to pump blood around and deliver oxygen and nutrients around the body. We've got Emily. Emily says it pumps blood around the body and keeps you alive. And we've got Amanda says the job of the heart is to carry and supply oxygen, blood and nutrients around the body. Some amazing answers there, actually, because we've got not just does it carry oxygen around the body? Well, it carries nutrients as well. And then we need to know that, well, the heart pumps blood and that blood contains various different blood cells platelets, water, so there's different components of the blood, isn't it? So really, really good answers. Absolutely some great answers there, and you really hit the nail on the head. Remember, the heart doesn't only pump oxygenated blood because it also has to pump that deoxygenated blood to the lungs and back. So the heart's job is to do all of the pumping of all of the blood. Deoxygenated blood to the lungs, oxygenated blood around the rest of the body, along with all of those nutrients and platelets that Mrs. mentioned. Brilliant. Can we um, get the answer up for that one and then we'll move on to the next question? We just move on to the next slide. I think the presenter fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> There we go, brilliant, thank you. Um, so to pump blood around our body, next question. Let's bring that up. What was in the slide off? Question two, why oh. do, oh, okay, well, uh, sneak preview of the answer there. <laughs> why do we need blood to be pumped around our body? We kind of touched on this in the previous answer because we had such excellent oh. answers. Um, and seeing as we've already revealed the answer, maybe we will just discuss this one quite quickly. Um, but absolutely, as you said in the previous question, we need blood to be pumped around our body so that all of those, all of that oxygen and all of those nutrients can get to all of the different parts of our body, particularly all of our cells that we need to stay alive. So we need that blood and we need what's in the blood to get to all of the different parts of our body. Um, so let's move on to question three, please. Thank you. Right. So question three, which of these, uh, one, two, three, or four, is closest to the size of your actual heart? If you could put a one, two, three, or four in the chat box so that this can uh, see what everyone thinks. 
Is your heart most similar in size to a football, a ping pong ball, mm. your fist, or your head? <laughs> Which one is it most similar to? Remember, it's here. I have a big heart. <laughs> One, two, three, or four. Are you seeing any numbers appear in this? Lots. They've all got it right. So, fist. Brilliant. Glad to hear that. And that's absolutely correct. Um, and that has the advantage of staying correct when you're a child and when you grow up, because obviously your hands get slightly bigger and your heart develops with you. So your heart is about the size of your clenched fist in your chest just there. That is a really good um, approximation guess about how big your heart is. Thank you. Okay, let's bring up the next question, please. Brilliant. What are the four chambers of the heart called? Four chambers of the heart, what are they called? Two of each type. What are they called? I like that. So the heart is the four bedroom house. It's a big house, it's a yeah. nice house. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we've got Cameron, left and right atrium, left and right ventricle. Nick, we've got some science students in here today, I must say. Um, Nick, right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. Amanda, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. Joseph, the left atrium and the left ventricle, the right atrium and the left ventricle. Brilliant, and that's absolutely correct. Those are the four chains of the heart, the left and right atrium and the left and right ventricle. And if you need to remember which ones come first, just remember that the reason it's called an atrium is because atrium is a fancy old fashioned word for reception room. So if you did live in a big, big four bedroom house, that entrance room to that really big house would be called an atrium. That's why that's where the blood goes first. The first rooms that it enters are called the left and right atriums. Brilliant. Uh, next, uh, uh, next question, not next answer. Right, what is the name of the artery that carries oxygenated blood to your body? Are you pushing your memory here? Oh. We did say it, um, very important. One of the largest arteries in your body carries oxygenated blood from your heart to the rest of your body. What is the name of that artery? Oh, it's an away, isn't it? Sorry, I'm cheating on time. Oh, we've got answers. We've got answers coming through. Okay, so Amanda says the aorta. Um, Gernick says the left atrium. Gernick is changing his answer. Because he's taking that off, so I'm guessing he's changing that. But I like the fact that they know it's an artery. That's all we have for now. Brilliant. Well, I definitely heard one correct answer in there, and it's always good to learn from others and let other people's answers jog your memory. Mm -hmm. It is, of course, the aorta, one of the biggest and most important arteries in your body, it carries oxygenated blood from the top of your heart down through the rest of your body. 
and turns into several other arteries about midway down your chest. Excellent. And next slide, please. I think that was my last question. Uh, one more. Now that we know how important the heart is, and that's hopefully a big part of what we've got from today's lesson, how can you keep it healthy? You know how important it is, you know how critical it is for, to keep you alive, you know how much it does, and how hard it works for you every day, every hour of every day, just beating away in the background, never stopping, never getting tired. It does a lot for you, keeps you alive. So how can you look after it? How can you keep your heart healthy? Well, you can tell they're very confident about this. Lots of answers coming yeah. through. Like immediately. Okay, exercise is like the most common one. Um, eating healthy is the second most common. So sensible diet, exercise, exercise and eating healthy. Okay. And a few other shares that we're going to talk about later. Yeah. So basically, um, maintain a good, um, healthy diet and exercise. It's, it's the two main ones. And that's absolutely Absolutely correct. Um, and, and to keep your heart nice and healthy, and you don't want fatty buildups or, or anything like that up in your arteries. So exercising to keep your heart worked out like any other muscle. If you don't use it, you will lose it. And having a nice, balanced, healthy diet. On top of those as well, adults, something to keep uh, uh, to consider as well is that smoking and alcohol are not good for your heart. Uh, those uh, avoiding those or minimizing those can help keep your heart nice and healthy. Um, you've got to look after it because it looks after you. Excellent. Next slide, please. Brilliant. And this uh, brings me towards the end of uh, my section. So I just wanted to remind everyone that you, you need to remember your heart has been in the background of your entire life, always there. It's one of your best friends, just beating away every day, all day. And that it does so much for you that it's important that you return the favour and look after your heart. Uh, avoid foods that are too fatty and make sure to exercise regularly to keep it nice and healthy. And that is uh, it for me. So I'm going to pass back to Miss Shallow. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Year Sixes. Thank you, Miss Adejimo. Thank you, Miss uh, Mr. Ryden. Uh, so just a few comments that have come through the chat. Um, Nick says that in his primary school, they're reading a book. Now, I'm not sure, Miss Adejimo, you might want to help me with this one. Um, they're reading a book called, is it the Vic or the Pig Heart Boy? So Nick, was that the Pig Heart Boy or the Big Heart Boy? And then in regards to your last question, um, sir, another thing that was mentioned, I've just got to scroll to find it now, which I thought was actually very, very good. Um, literally maintaining a low um, stress level. So to, to keep a good and healthy heart, um, Joseph added, Ref so and refusing any stress. Words to live by. Re re reducing. We can't minimize stress. Yeah. That will keep your heart. Healthy. Okay, and he was the pig. So he's the pig heart boy. So I might need to go and look for that book then. The next time I'm teaching the heart, I might make. I might need to make reference to it. Nick, maybe you might want to summarize what that book is about in the chat window, because I'm so curious right now. And then a few of them have come back to say they're actually doing the circulatory system in school at the moment. OK, thank you so much, um, both science teachers. So I was thinking as the session was going on, do we all know what sound a heart makes? So when you're watching those casualty TV shows, or when you're hearing um, maybe 
a monitor, and, um, a heart monitor in the background. Do we know what sound a heart actually makes? Anybody in the chat window? If you do, if you do, um, please feel free to let us know. Mister, do you know what heart, what sound a heart makes? I'm only asking that. Obviously, they're not biologists. They're that's a physicist. Oh, Mister, biologist. She might know. It's not a lab. Dub, lab. Dub, and you should lab, know because you're a biologist. <laughs> I was going to tease you say. Um, BA is the school for you. That's the that's the sound a heart makes. <laughs> yeah, Miss, you are right. It's a. Do, do we know why it makes that sound? Oh, sorry. sorry. I will close my windows. Miss, sorry. What did they say? Do we, Miss? You can't answer that. So this is for you oh, and I. Okay. So, okay. and everybody else, obviously, yes, this is, this is your question. It's like an extended question, okay? Um, so, why does the heart make a lop-dob sound? So, lop-dob, lop-dob, lop-dob. Ah, is that drum. Excellent. We've got an answer. Emily said it is the drum. Yep. So, your exploration question for today was, why is the heart known as the drum beat of life? Because, obviously, as those... Um, valves open and close, they make that lock stop sound. Aha. Well done. Okay, so we've come to the end of the session. So you can see Miss is gone and Sir might leave us any minute from, from now. This is our time now, year six. So some few updates about your transition program. Talk about what happened last session, the amazing piece of work that we got back from those of you that submitted your work. And I'm hoping that you've got your feedback from our teacher, Ms. Prescott. So right here with me in my classroom are your certificates. So the certificates from last lesson have been printed or here in my um, classroom, we've gone back into my office after this session, obviously. And we will be getting that to you through your schools at some point. So hopefully if you have a celebration assembly, this can be presented in your celebration assembly. So these are the certificates from last lesson. So just to remind who um, the winners were. So we had Erin from Burnhurst Junior School, Alana from Burstwood Primary School. We had Lola from Belvedere. We had Roberto Leon from Old Bexley. We had George from May Place. We had Caitlin from Upland. We had Imogen from Belmont. We had Tate from May Place. We had Joseph from Upland, of course. We have Alicia from Upland. We had Lucas from Gravel, um, Gravel Hill. We had Max from Upland. We had Charlie from St. Thomas More. We had Sophia from North Northumberland Heath Primary School. We had Freddie from Bendo, Beddingwell, sorry, Junior School. And we had Nikita from Hook Primary School. So those were the winners from last week's um, checkout task. So don't remember, don't forget um, today's checkout is already on the website or the link that was emailed to your parents who had the checkout. So make sure you click and complete the checkout. So next slide, please. So the next section is to look at who were the winners from last week's checkout. So art lesson checkout three, who are the people who are going to be getting the next round of certificates? Presenter, next slide, please. I think the presenters went home as well. Oh no, they're still there, Woo! thank goodness. Okay, so we have got Amanda for from Sicilian, so well done. So this is your certificate for being remarkable and ready for um, from last lesson's um, art club three. So well done. Next slide, please. Drum roll, lock up, lock up. So we've got Joseph B from Upland. So well done, Joseph. Next slide, please. We've got Ella from Belmont. Well done, Ella. We've got Lucas H from Gravel Hill. Let's see, did I call Lucas, was Lucas mentioned from, so, okay, second certificate in the role. Well done, Lucas. And next slide, please. We have got George from May Place. Next slide, so well done, George. We've got Roberto um, Leon. Very good, well done, that's your second certificate. 
Paquette as well. So well done, Roberto. And we have got Imogen. So Imogen also had a certificate from last week. So well done, Imogen. And that's Imogen from Belmont. And we have got Lola from Belvedere. So well done, Lola. That's your second certificate as well. So hopefully Alfie's completed checkup for science in our key certificate, guys, if your name has been mentioned so far. And I think we've got one more certificate. And that's Emily from Castilian Primary School. Why do I seem odd by this? Emily. Okay, don't worry, Emily. I'm going to fix your certificate for you because I know that's not your school, is it? Okay, so that's the certificate um, sec um, section for today's lesson. So let's go over to your question and answer. So if you've got any questions that you want answers to, here's your time, here's your opportunity to ask away. If you can't access the checkout, what you need to do is just go on BA's website. So if you've got um, a device that has the internet, just go on BA's website and under, under transition, you would see today's lesson. So it'll be a YouTube link. Click on that. And then underneath the descriptor, it says task and then check out for today's lesson. But you can always access it through your parents' email or you can just go straight to our website. So you can just be very independent. Okay, so any questions? I'll just give you a few minutes. So if you're writing. Okay, I've got a uniform question that's just come through. Um, I think that was actually by an email. In regards to if you're struggling to, to get an order for your uniform, normally most parents will not be buying uniform at this day. So people normally wait till about, say, end of July to start buying uniforms. So just keep trying um, Stephen's website to see if they've had um, a restock of uniforms. Or you can ask your parents to just call them directly, okay? Right, yes, yeah, we've got two more minutes before we come to the end of today's transition lesson. So any more questions? Okay, so Lucy, answer to your question. When you start in September, you're going to be in your BA class groups, okay? So, for example, we're not going to have all the people from Belmont in one class. So people are randomly placed into different classes. We've got one more minute. Well... 40, 20 seconds left if you've got any more questions.
Okay, so that brings us to the close of today's session. Well done for taking part. Now, for those of you actually studying the circulatory system, when you get back into school, feel free to tell your teachers about the four chambers that you've learned about the heart and the blood vessels that pump blood from the lungs to the rest of the body and from the body to um, back to the lungs. So feel free to discuss that and tell your peers all about it. And I look forward to having you all back in your transition program next term. Have a fabulous half term. Enjoy, read lots and lots of books. Check out the BA website for any transition activities that might be happening over the half term. So from me and the science team that are taking part or presented today's lesson, thank you so much for joining and taking part. Keep safe. Bye for now. Bye everyone.